Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Energy News Beat Podcast Daily Stand Up. My name is Stu Turley, President and CEO of the Sandstone Group. Michael's out having a little bit of fun today. We're getting ready for a visit with the Americans for Prosperity tomorrow and Ted Cruz and all and 16 other CEOs. It's going to be a blast for tonight's top stories. Please, let's take a look. Shell plans to cut jobs in offshore wind businesses. CEO refocuses on oil and gas. Then we have Germany repurposes underground gas storage for green hydrogen. That's a Hindenburg waiting to happen right there. True cost of abandoning the gold standard. This is a real problem. Uh, we should have never left the gold standard. Uh, let's take a look at the next one coming around the corner. How big tech has helped bring America's new energy crisis Oil falls on weak treasury auction, and it boosts the dollar. Conoco uh, Phillips to buy Marathon Oil in a $17 billion all-stock deal that bolsters shale assets. I'll tell you, this is kind of cool. But uh, Michael is going to go through this in a little bit more detail when he gets back. So let's get started and start running. Shell. Plans to stop, uh, plans job cuts in Northwest wind businesses. CEO refocuses on oil and gas. This is a Bloomberg story, and this is a quote. Uh, British oil major, uh, it begins the layoffs within months, mainly in Europe. Quote, uh, we are concentrating on select markets and segments to deliver the most value for our investors and consumers. A Shell spokesperson said Shell is looking how it can continue to compete for uh, offshore wind projects in minority markets while maintaining our focus on performance, discipline, and simplification, meaning wind farms are not profitable and they are really focusing on money coming back. That's why you're also seeing the they're trying to uh, take a look and see if they want to list in the U.S. to have access to the U.S. investors. So this is going to be um, very interesting to watch as another uh, major oil company is saying, hey, we've got to give money back to our investors. We've got to um, uh, be fiscally responsible and that means not throwing your money down a wind turbine. So let's go over here and take a look at Germany. Germany repurposes underground gas storage for green hydrogen. Holy smokes, Batman. Germany's government approved on Wednesday a draft law to enable faster deployment of hydrogen projects and infrastructure by fast-tracking permitting and environmental checks for hydrogen production, storage, and transportation, and government, and government sources told Reuters. I'll tell you, I got one word, Hindenburg. This is not a good thing. Hydrogen and pipelines and natural gas and redoing a natural gas storage plant uh, facility in order to put in green hydrogen adds up to a lot of expense, a lot of technical corrosion, and is it going to be something that's actually even going to make a difference on the overall uh, environment? I don't think so. Germany, quote unquote, plans to spend 559 million, 550 million euros, a direct grant and conditional payment mechanism up to 157 billion or 1.45 billion euros to support the second corrupt steel Europe. And that's trying to make it get to use uh, instead of natural gas. Uh, hydrogen. This has all the makings of another failure. My um, trans uh, in repurposing underground gas storage for transporting, transporting and storing green hydrogen. If they pull it off, I want to be the first to admit and call up uh, Egg. Edgar um, Lage uh, in the and he's the CEO of Ceph. 
I would love to go visit with him. So if I'm wrong, uh, I'd love to have him on the podcast. Let's go to the next one here. True cost of abandoning the gold standard. The gold standard is something that uh, we should have never left. Returning to the gold standard would limit the issuance of new currency. Uh, it's the only way that we are going to get out of debt is to main, get a grip on our fiscal uh, sanity again. There are geopolitical reasons why the U.S. abandoned the gold standard in 1971. Um, I personally also think that we should have never left and created the Fed. Um, I believe that was 1913. And since the Fed has been created, which is a different issue, we have lost 93% of the purchasing value of the dollar. So... Uh, I believe that we need to, um, I don't know that we'll ever get rid of the Fed, but the Fed is a non-governmental -gov financial body. Here's where we come into this. The conviction that the answer is yes is widespread in the fact that President Nixon closing the gold window in 1971, the convertibility of the U.S. dollar to gold in international foreign exchange markets, the original sin that doomed the inflationary hell of uh, fiat uh, currency, i.e. currency unbacked by anything uh, tangible such as gold or silver. Um, it is the one of the biggest reasons that we are in trillions, $34 trillion worth of debt, and uh, we need to get back to it. We need to get back to uh, not being in debt. I don't know that we'll ever get there. So when we take a look at um, this, this is an excellent uh, story uh, from oilprice.com. Let's go to the next story. How big tech has helped America's new energy crisis. Uh, when we sit back and take a look, um, big tech may be the single reason that we do not have an energy transition. I don't believe that the word transition is properly used there. Tech giants have uh, propagandized against reliable fossil fuel power plants by falsely claiming to be 100% renewable and implying everyone to do uh, could do it, Epstein continued. In fact, this is Alex Epstein. In fact, they have just paid utilities to credit them for other solar and wind to blame others for their coal and gas use. This is very much like Google. Google censors me. And they, I, I loved it when they said uh, green since 1977, and then they finally had to change it and they've changed their stories and everything else. They're not green. Um, do you know how much power they use and how much they, they don't? Uh, anyway, so Apple CEO Tim Cook got bragging uh, rights. California got brownouts. Even Texas, one of the better run states of the union, has made itself over-reliant on unreliable energy sources. What a great quote in there. So uh, big tech firms have been loudly trumpeting on how green they have been quietly shopping. All the while, they've been shopping for nuclear power to run their data centers. Nuclear is going to be the sustainable data center in AI. Um, AI insurance companies are going to be the death of the energy transition. Either your electric vehicles won't be able to be insured or your insurance is going to go so high on your homes and because of the fires and everything else. So anyway, uh, big tech uh, insurance, you got to love it. Let's go to oil falls as weak treasury auction boosts the dollar. Uh, I'll tell you, this is kind of crazy. Uh, oil retreated as another weak sale of treasuries raised concern about raising yields, stoking off uh, mood across the financial uh, markets. Uh, West Texas uh, WTI uh, settled about 80 bucks as equities declined. Um, U.S. bench is up. 
around 14% uh, U.S. benchmark crude is about 14% over 12 months because of the tensions across the Middle East and cuts uh, um, around uh, the petroleum exporting countries. The producers group will hold an online meeting this Sunday and is projected to extend its uh, curbs into the second half of the year. So they're not going to be doing that. Uh, I think it's going to be pretty interesting. Let's go to Conoco Phillips to buy Marathon Oil in 17 billion all stock deal that bolsters the shale assets. I've not gone through the details of this, but when they're talking about it, it's going to be reaching across Texas, New Mexico, North Dakota, and adding 2 billion barrels of resources to um, ConocoPhillips. Pretty strong purchase. Um, I am going to be visiting tomorrow with Ted Senator Ted Cruz and the folks over at Americans Prosperity and Steve Reese of Reese Consulting. And Steve knows a lot about this deal, and I will have some more information as we take a deeper dive on this. Um, the acquisition of Marathon deepens the portfolio. This is a quote uh, and fits within our financial framework, adding high quality, low cost of supply inventory adjacent to our leading U.S. Unconventional position, ConocoPhillips CEO Ryan Lance said in a statement. Lance said the transition would grow ConocoPhillips earnings, cash flow, and shareholder returns after the deal closes in the fourth quarter. ConocoPhillips expects shares buybacks worth seven billion in the first year. That's pretty strong. Um, anyway, hats off to ConocoPhillips for that. Hey, with that, like, subscribe, share. Uh, I'll tell you what, tell your friends, uh, hug your pets, tell them about Energy News Beat podcast. We appreciate one and every, all of our fans. Thanks and have an absolutely wonderful day.